afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's live stream. Today, I have a very special guest, Graham McTavish, who's an author, an actor, a director, and now a whiskey producer. Graham and I are going to talk a little bit about his background, his relationship with whiskey, and how he became the uh, owner of his new brand, McTavish Spirits, and released his new whiskey, The War Chief. We've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about, so stay tuned while I invite Graham on to this live stream. Hello. Graham, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'll take this hat off. Thank you for uh, taking the time out of your day to join me here on this live stream. Um, hope no, everything's going absolutely. well. Absolutely. My pleasure. My pleasure. Hopefully, the everything will work. We've just moved in to a new house yesterday. Okay. And so there is somewhat um, a chaotic atmosphere around me. Well, if you've ever moved house, you, you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, Lots of doors banging, people saying, where is it? I, I've lost it. I don't, you know, that's, 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 that's my life. Well, you got the internet connection up and going and everything looks clear on my end. So it looks like good. we're off to a good start. Good, 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 good. I'm and, glad to hear that. And are, where are you calling in from? Are you calling in from New Zealand? Uh, no, oh. no, no. I am actually in, um, in the county of Somerset in England. Okay. Uh, we've uh, moved to a house. Um, in Somerset, and so we're we're experiencing country living really for the first, proper first time. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, I'm no, really loving it. Absolutely, no, that sounds great. Well, I'm glad you uh, in your busy day, your busy week, uh, moving to a new place. You took a few minutes to hop on here, yep. talk a little bit about uh, your background and and uh, your new company, your new whiskey, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, just a little, uh, you know, kind of outline of what I want to talk about. I want to first touch a little bit on your background and then uh, move on to your relationship with whiskey and how that led to your brand, McTavish Spirits, and then, of course, yeah. your newly released uh, whiskey, The War Chief. Uh, and then I always like to end these conversations with a few fun questions that are kind of uh, unrelated to the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, no. So uh, before we get into the whiskey talk, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, your, your career. You have a, an accomplished career, uh, a lot in your career. You know, you're a television actor, movie actor, voice actor. Uh, you've authored a book. You've done, uh, hosted a series in Men in Kilts. Uh, and now you're a whiskey producer. What led you to a career in the entertainment business and be, to be an actor? Yeah, very good. Good question. Um, I ask that question of myself often. Um, I tell you what, really, uh, the best way to describe it, and really to encompass uh, most of the sort of major events of my life, and I think this is common to most people, actually, mm -hmm. is that there are a series of accidents, really. I think, I think there's a misconception about life mm -hmm. that um, it's some sort of linear plan mm -hmm. that you oh yeah, next year I'm going to do this, and then five years from now I'll be doing that, and 10 years, et cetera, et cetera. And really, um, my uh, getting involved in acting, a complete accident, uh, I was at school. I used to write mm -hmm. with my best friend, a guy called Neil Graham, and uh, he and I used to write comic sketches. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't trust anybody else to perform them. So we would uh, perform them in front of audiences. I'd write plays to be performed. That was my thing, writing. Yeah. I loved writing. And um, my, the drama teacher at my school, uh, a guy called Des Margotson, he, um, he would constantly ask me to be in school plays. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, you should be in our school play, Graham. And I always said no. Yeah. I had zero interest in being in a play. And then one day, he asked me to be in a play called The Rivals by Sheridan. And uh, there was three days before the performance. Uh, one of the actors had become sick. Uh, he couldn't do it, and would I would I step in? Mm -hmm. I, and I promise you, Tim, to this day, I have no idea why I said yes. <laughs> uh, truly, yeah, truly. I I racked my brains. I actually went back to my old school, and there's graffiti backstage about the production, mm -hmm. and I found it from 1979. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I I don't know why. Um, I think there was maybe a girl in the cast that I fancied, or something like that. Yeah. It really would have been that basic mm -hmm. you know 17 18 year old boy just you know wanting to impress somebody and and i learned the lines went on did the show and um it was a comedy people laughed and at the end of it they they applauded yeah and, and i thought yeah this is this is okay yeah I like this. Mm -hmm. and uh i was quite shy really as a person generally 
and acting uh, suddenly gave me this outlet mm -hmm. to be to be someone else completely, really. Yeah. And um, through characters. Mm -hmm. And so I did amateur theatre, and then I went to university, and I did a lot of acting at university, and then I went into professional acting uh, after that. So that was almost 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's been, uh, yeah, the, the, the journey from then, you know, there are things that I tried and wanted to achieve and some of which I have, but you know, it's a lot of it is just a sheer bloody mindedness. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. It's just a complete refusal to give up. Yeah. You know, really, it's just almost stupid mm -hmm. how you behave in these situations. And uh, I see it all the time. Um, I, I hear it from other people that have pursued these sort of things. I mean, listen, you know, people that I've worked with, people that are, are huge, like, like Peter Jackson, mm -hmm. Sylvester Stallone, the thing they have in common is they have that bloody mindedness, that yeah. complete confidence, you know, sometimes misplaced, mm -hmm. sometimes with people, but complete confidence. In, in themselves and a belief that it's all going to be okay. You and McGregor, the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You and McGregor never had any doubt. It would all be fine. Yeah. And and I think you have to have uh, almost a sort of bit of your brain missing. Yeah. To be able to do some of these sort of things that you know I was lucky with my parents. My parents were very supportive. My father worried financially which I completely understand. Mm -hmm. But my mother never expressed any doubt, even though she was probably racked mm -hmm. with concern yeah. that I was choosing to become an actor. Uh, and it's important that you have those. You need, in my experience, and it's the same, I mean, you can say the same actually about the whiskey with, uh, with Paul and Connor. You need people, you need to meet people who can uh, open doors for you mm -hmm. and show you possibilities and and believe in you, mm -hmm. uh, in your life, in, in work, in anything, yeah. really. You, you need that. And if you have enough of them, it doesn't need to be as many. Mm -hmm. You know, a half a dozen is fine to really see you through. Yeah. But you just need those people to be able to go, yeah, yeah, you, you're you not wasting your time. Yeah. This is a good idea. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's kind of how it happened. To me. Yeah, no, and I, I completely agree with that. Your support system, the people who encourage you, and uh, make you basically better than who you would be originally are those who drive you to those next levels and to be to accomplish some goals that might seem impossible to begin with. But like you said, you have to turn off that doubt in your brain and just pursue it and, you know, hope for the best. Yeah. And, you know, and, and have a, a thick skin, mm -hmm. be resilient. Yeah. Um, you know, be, get knocked down as Sylvester Stallone is always saying, you know, keep punching and all mm -hmm. of that sort of thing. Don't, don't, you know, doesn't matter how hard you get hit, it's how you take the hits. And all yeah, that yeah, you have to have a, a healthy acceptance of failure when you try yeah. to pursue these things. And, 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 and I think, um, you know, you don't want a life just filled with failure, but uh, failure is very instructive. Yeah, absolutely. You learn more through failure oftentimes than through success. 100%. 100%. So what, where do you think you'd be right now if you didn't say yes to that original <laughs> job? What, what career would you have pursued? Well... My father was an airline pilot. Mm. Um, he'd, he'd been a pilot in the Second World War, a bomber pilot in the Second World War. And like a lot of his colleagues, um, went into civil aviation after the war. Yeah. But that's, uh, that's where they all went, the ones mm -hmm. that survived, the ones that were lucky enough to survive. And, and he, he did that. Um, and he was very, you know, my brother didn't pursue that career. And he was very encouraging of me. I, I was interested in flying. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was doing all the ex the right exams to become a pilot. I'd joined the, um, uh, what was it called? The, the sort of air training corps mm -hmm. at university. Yeah. Um, I'd done my medical. I was going to join the RAF, the Royal Air Force. And then I was going to go into civil aviation. That was the path that I was going on. Okay. And then, and then I did, um, I did acting. Mm -hmm. And it's also... Listen, I mean, you know, I don't know what I would have been like as an airline pilot. Mm -hmm. I, I really honestly don't know. Yeah. Um, it, it could have been disastrous, really, you know, for everyone involved. Yeah. It would have been awful. But um, the thing about the acting was as soon as I started doing it, I not only enjoyed it, 
but it seemed like I kind of understood it mm -hmm. uh, instinctually. Yeah. And I think that's something that's really important when you go through your life. There are things, if you're lucky enough to be given the opportunity to see something mm -hmm. or to experience something that you instinctively um, are drawn to and enjoy yeah. and, are, and are reasonably good at doing, mm -hmm. Um, that that's a massive help. Yeah, it's a massive help, and uh, you know, and that could be anything. It could be anything. You know, if you suddenly find yourself like my daughter was just telling me that one of her friends from school um, has this, you know, really extraordinary vocation to become a combat nurse. Yeah, she wants to be a nurse in combat. Nurse. Yeah, and she has been training, literally training for that since she was about thirteen. Oh, you know, she would go yeah. to the gym every day before she went to school. Yeah, because. She found something that she was like, yes, mm -hmm. this is what I want to do. And I think anybody who has that in their life is extremely lucky. Oh, 100%. To have your passion align with your vocation and be able to yeah. thrive and uh, just be the best at it above everybody else. I mean, that is a very special thing to have that uh, not everybody sure. really kind of can pursue. Um, so uh, throughout your, your notable career, filming movies, television shows and whatnot, do you have, uh, all right, this is a two-part question. What was your favorite experience creating one of these projects? And what was your favorite finished project when things were all said and done? Or maybe they're both the same thing. Mm, that's a really good question. Um, well, uh, I really, I have really enjoyed um, the process with the bourbon, with the war chief, mm -hmm. uh, with the guys. Yeah. I've really enjoyed that. Um, it's a bit early to say, you know, what that's going to be like going forward in terms of looking back on it and all yeah. that, that sort of thing. So I think um, I, I really enjoyed writing. I've always enjoyed writing. Yeah. And uh, I suppose the, the two things that I've been involved in creating that I've been most proud of and most happy with um, were the play that I did with uh, my friend Nick Pace. Um, we did that in the 80s about Vincent van Gogh. Mm -hmm. And we did that at the National Gallery in London and then we toured it all over the world. And again, not planned. It wasn't planned to be toured all over mm -hmm. the world. We just, it was a long story, but we ended up getting a lot of interest from America. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we went to America and we, uh, we, we did it there mm -hmm. um, all over. Uh, and the other one would be, I think, the Clanland books. Yeah. Uh, um, with the, the third ones coming out in November and... Mm -hmm. I, I just love the process of writing those the yeah. discoveries that I've made in doing it, the historical discoveries, the fun in writing, you know, about my my friendship with Sam and how how that has developed over the years and um, and how you know and and that's another example, you know, I, I met Sam in a casting office in Soho in London mm -hmm. ten years ago, more than ten years ago now, and. Um, you know, I would never, ever have imagined that I would have ended up driving around in a camper van yeah. in all over Scotland and New Zealand and writing books about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just never have occurred to me. Yeah. But I, I really liked that process and, and nothing has made me more proud, honestly, than having a published book mm -hmm. and being able to show that to my kids. And I, I just wish my parents were alive to, to mm -hmm. see it because they know how much that would have meant to me. So, yeah. yeah, those two things, really. Yeah, no, and that's great. I know your your book uh, has gotten just raved reviews on Amazon. Um, so that's that's a really cool experience. And, uh, you know, your documentary series going through New Zealand and Scotland, really cool show. Uh, I was just watching some last night. And, uh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, no, it's – yeah, I was watching the one on the food and whiskey of Scotland. Uh, oh, have, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, really cool. That's probably – the one that the, the least traumatic for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very yeah. straightforward, right? Yeah, yeah. eating, drinking, yes. pretty safe. Yeah, you know, nothing bad's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, there's other stuff that we do that <laughs> Sam particularly seems determined to uh, test my. <laughs> My nervous system to the very limit. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, all right, let's shift gears a little bit to the uh, the whiskey side of things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're you're a Scotsman. You yeah. just released a bourbon. Yeah. Are you allowed back in Scotland? Well, <laughs> listen, it's been a, it's been a long road. It's been a long road, yeah. and it goes back really to twenty years ago, mm -hmm. practically. Yeah. When I first went to America, when I first moved there, mm -hmm. and I'd never had bourbon. Yeah. Never. 
and obviously I grew up with scotch mm-hmm. you know father would bring it out at the dinner table you know for, from an early age yeah. I was introduced to scotch and it was symbolic of a kind of um, family experience mm-hmm. a community experience yep and uh, it was about coming together and all of this and thing it's lovely uh, but when I went to America um, I really had no understanding of bourbon at all mm-hmm. I kind of thought and this is terrible I thought that bourbon was really sort of just an American version of scotch. It was kind of like, well, they can't really call it scotch. Yeah. So they can call it something else. And uh, I was there, and my good friend, um, Nolan North, who is a wonderful, wonderful actor, does, mm-hmm. I've done loads of voice work with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did a series of uh, video games called Uncharted. Yeah, I love those games. Those are great games. Right, yep. right, yeah. He's Nathan Drake. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Very wonderful. That's guy. awesome. Uh, very funny. And um, we became very good friends, and I was around at his house, and we'd had dinner, and he said, oh, uh, do you want a bourbon? And, you know, I was like, okay, sure. If you haven't got anything else, I didn't say that, but it was like, yeah, yeah, right, whatever. And he gave me it, and I tasted it, and I was like, oh, this, this isn't scotch. Mm-hmm. This is really lovely. This is so, this is really different. I can really detect the difference mm-hmm. in it and the immediate the first feeling i had was guilt mm-hmm. really guilt yeah. i just felt like i was cheating on scotch mm-hmm. really it really was that it was yeah. like i can't i can't admit this mm-hmm. i can't stop talking about this um and it's um it, it that went on for a little while and i would i remember i was given a, a bottle of angel share uh when I did Preacher, which mm-hmm. was a TV show that I did for four seasons, mm-hmm. and one of the wrap gifts on one of the seasons was a, this special bottle of Angel Share. Mm-hmm. And I would have it in my drinks cabinet in New Zealand. And whenever I wanted to have a, like a, a <laughs> oh, somebody smashing the house up. No worries. Um, um, whenever I wanted to have a drink, you know, at the end of the day, in the evening, out on the deck, or anything like that, I would go to the drinks cabinet. And I would, there would be scotch everywhere. Scotch this, scotch that, because people would be sending me scotch and mm-hmm. I'd buy scotch and whatever. And there was the angel share, and I would always pick that. Mm-hmm. I would pick it. Yeah. And I was outside, and I really liked it. Um, and then, fast forward to meeting Paul and Connor, and then they really sort of brought me into the fold mm-hmm. with, with bourbon. Yeah. And just said, listen, you know, if you're interested in you know, we can we can do something together, and that led to a, to an R and D journey where we were testing all mm-hmm. sorts of different flavors and combinations and you know notes mm-hmm. and all the rest of it, and which was, I mean, they were hard. They're hard and drinkers. Basically. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not going to beat about the bush. Uh, I was. Uh, it was a challenge, which I rose to, and then uh, we 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 came upon this particular. Um, bottled in bond mm-hmm. style. This was this was a, a, lo- a beautiful combination. Um, at the seventy seventy five percent corn, twenty one percent rye, and four mm-hmm. percent malted barley. And and that was, I remember we were all tasting it. And Paul Paul said, yeah, "What do you think of that?" And I go, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's the one." Mm-hmm. And, and that's the one that we we collectively chose to be the first um, whiskey that mm-hmm. we. East. and um we're super proud of it i really i really think it's uh, it's a really good it's a great whiskey i i think yeah and um i've learned so much mm-hmm. on this with this experience um still learning i mean i i sort of say that you know if 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 bourbon is a sort of series of, of mountain ranges i'm in the foothills yeah of them. and and i don't think you can ever almost ever reach the summit Mm -mm. because it's always changing. And that's one of the things I found fascinating in the process. And I think this is probably true of the Scotch as well. But um, what I found fascinating in the process was that uh, the possibilities are almost endless, Mm -hmm. almost infinite with bourbon. So you can can make small adjustments, you know, the finish, um, you know, how long it's aged, the wood, um, you know, wh- where the location is, uh, the climate, 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, is there uh, is there sort of um, is it is it close to a particular water source? Mm -hmm. All of these things just make that little bit of difference. Mm -hmm. And I found that I, I get really geeky about that sort oh, yeah. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, love it. And and I also loved the other thing that really appealed to me about bourbon, and it and it it sort of was a reflection of my acting career in a weird way, which is why I I call it a Scotsman's dream of America, is mm -hmm. because growing up. I looked to America for inspiration in terms of acting. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, it was another sort of guilty experience for me that uh, I think actors, particularly British actors, are, are sort of taught and encouraged to, to want to do Shakespeare, mm -hmm. you know, to do classics. And I've done loads of Shakespeare. Yeah. But I, I, I kind of was repressing this desire to do movies mm -hmm. and TV and action and fantasy and yeah. all the things that I've subsequently done. Mm -hmm. And that was America. Yeah. So I looked to America and it was the same, you know, when, when the Scots settlers, not just Scots, but Irish and English, when they moved to America in the 18th century, mm -hmm. um, they brought with them that love of distilled spirit mm -hmm. and the ability to do it. And then they just the uh, the, the, again, another wonderful happy accident when you had George Washington, um, kind of was a 1791, um, just said to them, look, you know, it's great, you have still whiskey, I'm whiskey to distill it myself, love it, it's great, but I, I'm, I'm going to have to tax it to you. Yeah. We're just running low, we're running low on funds, uh, revolutionary war was pretty expensive, mm -hmm. so if you could just dip into your pockets, give me some tax on the whiskey, that'd be great. Yeah. And these guys went, no, I don't think so. No, no. We kind of that was kind of the reason we fought the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to move west, and a lot of them moved west and ended up in the area that we now know as Kentucky, Tennessee, you know, Indiana, Ohio, mm -hmm. and discovered that wonderful limestone scene mm -hmm. and the iron free water. And and it, and and really, I mean, it's not like you can say, oh, it was tax that mm -hmm. did it, but it was one of the reasons mm -hmm. that those people ended up discovering and creating mm -hmm. this American spirit that we all now love, yeah. including me. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love that historical part of the yeah. journey with bourbon, that it, it was, you know, people arriving, they wanted, they had a surplus of corn, you know, hey, let's distill that. Mm -hmm. And here we are. Yeah. And it's, we're, now we're having a conversation about it. Yeah, I, I love that. No, that's yeah. uh, the history of all whiskeys, all spirits, uh, is always fascinating, and so much of it is not only shaped by the land. It's uh, grown like United States. We grow corn, we make bourbon. Scotland, they grow barley, they make Scotch whiskey. Uh, yeah. You know, in, in uh, France, they grow grapes, they make brandy and wine. So, so much of the spirits of a country are developed yeah. by the land, and then so much of that is shaped by taxes. I mean, take Irish whiskey for example. They're standard style is pot still whiskey, which is uh, unmalted and malted barley. Well, the uh, government wanted to put a tax on malted barley. The Irish were like, well, let's just start making it with unmalted barley and we avoid paying excess taxes. And there we have a pot still whiskey right in, right in your, uh, you know, created through the shaping of taxes. So it's such a cool way how yeah. whiskey is what it is today. The story behind it. Yeah. Necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. Very true. Yeah, and, uh, and to your it's point... True. It's true of so many things. Yeah, and then uh, your your earlier point with uh, the, the fine-tuning of whiskeys and how little changes of the dial can change the outcome from the yeast, the where the, the grain comes yeah. from, where the yeah. wood comes from. Yeah. Everything goes into it to make a different, slightly uh, unique style of whiskey, and all that is just a fascinating part of the, the whole thing, the history, the way it's made, everything. I remember we were visiting... Um... I'm struggling to remember which distillery it was. I think it might have been Woodford Reserve. Yeah. Uh, the distiller there, the chap that was showing us around, was showing us the different yeast. Mm -hmm. In this, just this sort of chemistry lab, um, really. Yeah. And I and I love that about it as well. That that it's it's if you're a chemist, mm -hmm. this is this is something that you could really do well in. Yeah. Um, creating beautiful whiskey. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I find that, I mean, I have no science background at all, but yeah. I just love that these different types of people get together, you know, entrepreneurs, creatives, scientists, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And they all go, hey, you know, but, and they just share a love of whiskey yeah. and, 
and, and, then, and the making of it. So yeah, it's, it's a great. Practice. Yeah. Yeah, and as as whiskey evolves, and right now we're in the whiskey boom in the world, you, uh, right. different distillers are trying to push the line of what can we make that's unique, creative. Uh, so it's really cool to see the innovations that we're uh, that our distilleries are coming out with now, um, and uh, you know it just leads to more interesting whiskeys down the road. So that's one of the cool things about it. Yeah, yeah, no, I um, I, I agree, and uh, you know I look forward to, and and I know Paul and Connor do as well. I, we look forward to the iterations that will come in mm -hmm. our in our brand. Yeah, you know, we already have uh, some ideas uh, down the line, and we can't wait to to start working on those. Yeah, but for now, you know, the bottled in bond is is really again, you know, because of that premium reputation, but also just the history involved in mm -hmm. bottled in bond. Yeah, I, I, it really appealed to me. I, yeah. I was just like, oh, that's that's just great. Yeah, that that. To, to to ensure a standard of safety mm -hmm. in whiskey, yep. they they came out with this this law, yeah. and a law which doesn't even exist for a lot of Scotch yeah. or Quebec, mm -hmm. and um, and they came out with it and said, no, oh, no, 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 because you know sometimes people were making whiskey that was just downright dangerous. Yeah, yep, <laughs> absolutely. Love that. I love it. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was the it was the obvious path. Uh, uh, for our first first um, expression. Yeah, yeah, I think bottled and bond is basically the baseline of a good bourbon, and then you've got so much other creativity as you kind of explore down that way. Now, you said 20 years ago, that's when you kind of had that epiphany moment with bourbon. Did you have a previous moment with scotch whiskey or any other style of whiskey before that that really connected you with just the spirit in general? Or was it really the bourbon that was like, oh, wow, this is something different that I really am connecting I, with? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Um, I've drunk scotch and I, I, I'm more than happy to drink it and I can tell the difference between different regions mm -hmm. and I love those differences and I love the history involved and all the rest of it. But it was never my go-to drink. Yeah. Um, same with other spirits. It was never my go-to drink. Mm -hmm. uh, I was more a, a beer guy really into my late 30s and and then you know wine and all the rest of it but it was bourbon when i encountered bourbon i suddenly realized oh now i understand mm -hmm. why people enjoy this type of drinking yeah and up to that point i kind of it had been a little bit i had been missing it a bit mm -hmm. it was a little bit of a kind of not a connection that i was making yeah uh, but then really thanks to nolan north um who is going to be actually joining me when i do bourbon and beyond um, in a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. he's going to join me uh, because I thought it was just very fitting. Yeah, the, he, he lives he lives not that far away actually, so mm -hmm. he's going to join me. And the man that started it all for me, my little odyssey into bourbon. Yes. Yeah, no, no, that's that's great. And so, how do you go from loving bourbon twenty or like that connection that, uh, that epiphany with the bourbon to creating your own brand mctavish spirits and i know your your frequent collaborator sam obviously has his own brand that he does with scotch yeah. whiskey was that a, did that have any influence on the direction you took or was this independent of all that no i mean it, it was independent really i mean the influence came primarily from from paul and connor who i um can't thank enough really for how uh, how much they've educated me, how much they've guided me, mm -hmm. and um, and they they were the ones that because of my interest in bourbon, because mm -hmm. I'd, I'd had this kind of a conversation, it was a bit like if if at the end of this conversation you said, hey Graham, you seem to be really interested in bourbon, what about actually creating your own? Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, I'm not, I, I, I'm I, I wouldn't ever style myself as a businessman mm -hmm. really, yeah, and I'm not really interested in that uh celebrity tag yeah. thing. I, it actually makes me physically win mm -hmm. really. um so i'm uh, you know i want i i don't want to be just the face of this yeah you don't know, want to be involved in it in in every process along yeah. the way and so it, it, it's really important to me that that people understand that this isn't a kind of flash in the pan yeah it's, uh, that i'm this is something i'm committed to yeah I want to I want to learn along the way and you know talk to me in five years time and uh, however many um, expressions we've we've gone through by then mm -hmm. and say hey you know 
this 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 is an interesting journey that you've been on and yeah and, and, and why have you chosen this and i want to be able to have those conversations yeah uh, about it. and so you know i'm i'm a, a huge fan of what sam's been doing yeah um with, with his uh whiskey and his tequila and now his gin mm -hmm. uh, i mean the man's an absolute dime though. he <laughs> yeah. never stopped no it's true yeah yeah, he, yeah of he, course he's incredible yeah uh you know he's, he's got my peak challenge he's He's, he's got enormous amounts of energy and yeah. enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have quite a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm. And I'm lucky enough to have people that are helping me as well. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and I'm not going to pretend to be some expert. Mm -hmm. of I, am, I am a very enthusiastic amateur. Yeah. And uh, hopefully along the way I will become more and more uh, astute. Yeah, but for now, I'm just very happy with what we've come up. With. Yeah, no, I mean the the first release uh, has gotten a lot of praise. I know that, um, and I noticed you named your company McTavish Spirits, and yeah. the War Chief is uh, closely associated with your journey from uh, from Europe yeah. to America. Does that yeah. does the word spirit leave the door open for other styles of whiskey outside of bourbon? Are you guys going to be strictly a bourbon brand? Well, I mean, listen. For, you know, I'm definitely not going to get ahead of myself because I think, I think we've got a long way to go yeah. um, in the future with mm -hmm. bourbon, and that's what I'm really looking forward to. That is my primary focus, yeah. and that is my interest. Um, I, I, it's it's certainly not on the cards now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm I'm not going to be releasing my own run anytime <laughs> or anything because I think you know, for me to be. Um, really infused by something mm -hmm. and this is where you know someone like sam for instance yeah um is, is great because he really does have genuine enthusiasm for all yeah. of the things he creates yeah um my enthusiasm and that, that's what's really motivated me mm -hmm. for birth and that's what's going to be carrying me forward um and uh you know whatever else i can fit in 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 the distant future great but um for now it's it's the American spirit. Though. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about the War Chief. How did you come up with the name? And I know you touched a little bit on the tasting process, but what are, what are some of the details? What are, if somebody wants to open up their own bourbon brand, what kind of process have you gone through to kind of come up with this bottle and bond seven-year-old okay. from MGP? Yeah. Well, um, my process mm -hmm. has been drinking it, enjoying it, mm -hmm. doing the R&D with Paul and Connor, um, I came up with the name, yeah. the War Chief. I've come up with a few names that we'll use in the future. Um, that's my sort of thing. Yeah, is going to be good at that. Uh, but the War Chief seemed appropriate, just for a lot of reasons. It, it's just something that um, has been associated with some of the roles that I've done, and uh, I like the sound of it. I'm, I'm a big believer in how things sound, mm -hmm. um, and I also. We chose McTavish Spirits because I really wanted to emphasize that for me, this is um, this is almost like a kind of marriage between Scotland and America. Yeah. This is this is it is a Scotsman dreaming of America, all yeah. of that stuff. Yep. And I wanted to I wanted to really emphasize that. Um, looking back, when I look at it now and I see it on the label, um, McTavish, because it's my name. Yeah, I do feel a little self-conscious. I've got to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like. Could, could he have picked any more, as it been a modest title for yeah. his whiskey? Or should we call it Douglas? Just name, name it after me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but objectively, McTavish is a, is a, is a very, very, very Scottish name. Mm -hmm. It's like the quintessential Scottish name. Yeah. <laughs> and a name I'm very proud of. Yeah. And, um, and it makes me happy, you know, when I think of my father and my my grandparents and all the rest of them and my children that their name is associated with this that means a lot to me mm -hmm. so i have to try and put aside my kind of childish embarrassment of mm -hmm. using my name and and actually celebrate yeah uh, what it is which is a, a you know a, a marking of uh, my ancestry yeah really. my, and my and my scottishness yeah and it's the scott it's i'm not an american making them yeah but, I'm a Scotsman making birth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I want that kind of clear. 
Yeah, and I think that kind of goes with what you were saying earlier. You have to have no doubt to put your reputation on the line like that. You have to bottle good whiskey because you don't want yeah. McTavish to be associated I with know. a poor quality bourbon. So you, you're putting all, all the cards reasons, on the table. All of these things cross my mind. Yeah. But um, no, and, and and that's why, yeah, we, we did. We spent a lot of time making sure that what we were, what we were offering was um, something that we were really proud of. Yeah. But uh, And, you know, my dear friend... Um, I like I like involving my friends in these things, and my dear friend Emma Quinn, uh, who lives in Scotland, mm-hmm. who I've known for thirty years. She's a graphic designer. Mm-hmm. She designs the label, and I love the label. Oh yeah, I think it's really beautiful. And um, and uh, you know, all credit to her. She's she's been amazing, actually. Yeah, the presentation is beautiful. It's a beautiful design, a nicely shaped bottle, um, and then obviously the uh, the whiskey itself, the bottle, it's seven years old, obviously 50% ABV, and then just the mash bill you guys are using. It's all very well thought of and, and top-notch stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, a lot of thought did go into that. I mean, I was very much involved in, well, first of all, obviously, the, 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 the expression that we've chosen um, with the war chief, but also just things like the bottle, the mm-hmm. labeling, the naming, um, you know, the, the, the strategy uh, that we're trying to come up with in terms of bringing it to, to market is, you know, we want it, we wanted to get it out there online, first of all, mm-hmm. uh, in a sort of pre-sale style. Yeah. Uh, but we are very committed into getting it in store in different parts of America, but, but not going nuts, yeah. you know, uh, we want to be, we want to pair up with the right people, mm-hmm. and we want to we want to introduce it to the, the market in a in a measured way. Yeah, and that's also true internationally. I know that Paul is um, is talking with people in Scotland, I believe, mm-hmm. um, and very keen to to bring this to to Scotland. Yeah, and uh, and we'll go from there. Um, but you know, it's a it's a it's a fascinating first time learning experience yeah i've never done anything like this before Mm -hmm. and it's really exciting Mm -hmm. i mean it occupies a big part of my day yeah yeah thinking about it and um talking to my wife about it telling my kids and uh uh, my friends were involved in doing the video shoot and the the photo shoot that we did and Mm -hmm. and i've I've really loved that about it yeah sort of family Mm -hmm. atmosphere Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, without a doubt. And uh, you guys uh, are being very transparent with with what's in the bottle, which is very important for whiskey enthusiasts at the very least. And then you have it at a good price point for what's in the bottle because obviously MGP whiskey brands are out there. There's a lot of uh, independent bottlers taking MGP, but you guys are just being transparent at a good price point. So that's that's a huge uh, nod in your favor in terms of uh, what you guys have out in the marketplace. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, that that was very important. To, yeah. 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 No, it's going to be very exciting to see uh, what else you guys come up with and and uh, how this kind of spawns the the whole uh, McTavish Bourbon Empire as we uh, as we I, see it. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm just yeah. I'm, I'm I am I'm really excited about it. I'm you know I'm I'm lucky enough to be acting and you know I'm enjoying the writing and I have ideas that I want to pursue going forward with that and maybe directing my, you know, uh, also and uh, more producing and stuff. But this is, this is just um, such a wonderful original uh, line for me in mm-hmm. terms of what, what's happening with my life. And uh, to go back almost to your first question, I think it's, it's important to not necessarily reinvent yourself, but to, Allow yourself to um, take take big steps into things that you're not familiar with. Yeah. To um, to be courageous. Yeah. And 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 risk failure. You know, basically. Yeah. To you know, just say, you know, hey, because it, it could be justifiably said. You know, it's a little presumptuous. This guy bringing out a bourbon. Yeah. You know, who does he think he is? Yeah. And I I completely understand that, but. Um, I think it's important that you make those sort of courageous steps in your life. Yeah. It, that was the same motivation that led me to move to America in the first place. Uh, it was the same, you know, even even down to, you know, if you, I don't know if you have children yourself. But, uh, yes, um, just recently. Yeah. Yep. You know, right. You know, that 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 moment in your life is, is pretty big. Mm-hmm. And yep. when you, that's a big fork in the road in your life. And um, 
it, it takes courage and uh, strength. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously the joy and everything that goes with it, but you need to be um, courageous and fearless mm -hmm. in your life. And, uh, and this is a tiny part of that to me. Is, yeah. Is, is, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You need to, to risk in order to, to get the rewards at the end. So, and that's yeah. what you guys are doing. And, you know, just the honesty and openness about your part and your place in this whole whiskey journey is great. I think that can be really relatable and connective to the audience and the people who are trying to trying your bourbon for the first time or just trying whiskey for the first time. It can be seem, yeah. it can seem a little daunting, a little overwhelming, but you know, you're kind of in it with them. You're going to take this journey together, I, which is really cool. I, 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 you, that is such a brilliant way of putting it. Yeah. We are in it together. Yeah, we really are. And, and that's why, you know, when, when people comment on it, uh, if I do post, if anybody comments on it, um, you know, uh, saying that they, they bought it and they're looking forward to it. I want to know what they think of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I really do. Mm -hmm. I want, I want the feedback. I want to. Uh, I want to know what I'm doing right, what we're doing right, what we can improve on, all of those sort of things, and um, and to be, you know, in that journey as you say with them. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, I think that's the same with with any artistic endeavor, and I would put that this as an artistic endeavor. Absolutely. Um, that you, um, you know, it's like stepping out on stage. It's like writing a book. It's like being in a film. It's like painting a picture whatever mm -hmm. it is you you lay yourself in front of the public and mm -hmm. say here it is this this is i like it what do you think yeah absolutely uh, and then you know then they can deliver their verdict mm -hmm. yeah no and uh, i know i've got uh, some of your whiskey on the way to me now i haven't actually tried it myself yet but once I do, I do share my whiskey with a lot of people. So I'll be sure to get their feedback and I'll be happy to share it with you and your team to oh, see what their thoughts are. Please, please do. I would really be grateful to yes. hear that. Thank yeah. So, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm always help, happy to help different, uh, different brands, different uh, whiskey producers, especially those who are willing to be open, honest, and uh, kind of take everybody's advice and criticism seriously to create the best possible product out there. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I do have a to, to shift gears again. I do have a fun uh, few questions for you just at the end here. Uh, but one last time, where can people buy uh, the War Chief, and where can't they buy it yet? Okay, um, you can go to mctavishspirits.com, and mctavish obviously is spelled without an A, um, so it's M C. mctavishspirits.com. That's where you can go online to, to find it. There are about, I think, five states mm -hmm. that don't do it, and I don't know off the top of my head what they are. I'm okay. very sorry for that. But, um, uh, but however, as I said, it is going to be in store soon in selected states, mm -hmm. and we're going to be expanding internationally. So watch this space. Certainly towards the end of the year and into next year, there'll be more and more news on, on that front. Um, uh, I'm... Uh, uh, my Instagram handle is uh, at Graham McTavish, mm -hmm. or one word. And my Twitter slash X handle is also at Graham McTavish. So mm -hmm. it's very simple. Yeah. And you can go on there and, and comment and tell me what you think and, and all the rest of it. And uh, I'll do my best to respond. Yeah. No, that's great. Is there, a, is there a limit number of bottles that you guys are producing? How, how many bottles are in this first batch here? We, we are, we, well, you know, this is, to be honest, this is more of a Paul and Connor question, but yeah. I know that we are having, uh, we're, we're getting more, okay. we're getting quite a lot more. Very good. And, um, you know, we are, we're, we're getting them out there really mm -hmm. as, as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a really great response so far. So, um, we want to, we want to keep going. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, there that... isn't a, as far as I know, there isn't a cap on mm -hmm. it as such. All know? right. So, but... That's good. To, no fears yeah. of running out anytime soon, but definitely go no, online, no try it out. out. Yeah, no. no, absolutely. And it's uh, just the 750 mil bottles. You, do you guys have sample bottles out there too, or is it you, you, the full thing? It's, it's just the 750. Okay, yeah. perfect. Um, no, that's great. I'm, I'm excited to try it myself. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to you personally once I do try it, give you some of my yeah, thoughts yeah, on it. Yeah. Um, all right. So just a few fun questions to kind of wrap up okay. the conversation. Completely yeah. uh, un unrelated to what we've talked about so far. What is your favorite action film? Oh, gosh. <laughs> that's a, oh my God, that's such a difficult question. <laughs> I mean, I would, I, would, I would place them into subsets. Mm -hmm. okay? 
So, for instance, I would put, uh, there's a film called Zulu. Okay. A pretty epic film made in the 1960s, set during the Zulu Wars in the 19th century. Absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. Superb. Superb, superb. Um, Die Hard, as a contemporary action mm-hmm. movie, is, is pretty much perfect. Yeah, it's, yep. It's got everything going for it. Um, an action western, I would put Unforgiven. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Although that's not got a lot of action. Yeah. But And another great favourite of mine uh, would be, well, there's loads of westerns. Tombstone. All right, yeah. Uh, open Range. Mm-hmm. These, these are... I mean, these are great westerns, and, and talk about something that is quintessentially American. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that would be those would be my uh, my choices. Too. Yeah, and I, I and Die Hard is my most common response to that question. So you're you're right on par with with most people. I've watched it so many times. Yeah, it, it, is it a Christmas movie or is it not a Christmas movie? That's the quintessential it's question. Hundred percent a Christmas movie. Yep. 100%. Agree. Yeah, agree, agree. Yeah. Um, what's something that you haven't done in your life that you wish you could do? Oh, play a musical instrument. Oh, interesting. Is there one that you wish you could play? Oh, well, either the bagpipes, because my father played the bagpipes. Mm -hmm. I would love to. And I I have had somebody offer to teach me. and, um, And she promised me that you can get reasonably okay in six months. Mm-hmm. And so I should really try and give it a go. Uh, or the guitar, the electric guitar, because, you know, I grew up loving kind of rock bands. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, everybody fantasizes about mm-hmm. being on stage with an electric yeah. guitar. Yeah. No, no, yeah. absolutely. Um, and since you are a Scotsman, uh, when you're ready to put down your war chief, your bourbon, what kind of Scot, what's the Scotch whiskey that you connect with the most? What's your favorite Scotch whiskey? Um, again, this changes. It does change. Based on um, mood, based on context, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Historically, you know, different periods of my life. Uh, it, I, it, Highland Park used to be my mm-hmm. go-to. Yeah. Which I loved. Then when I was doing Outlander, it was Glenn Farkler. Oh, yeah. I really loved. And recently, I've been introduced by a friend of mine from House of the Dragon, um, to spring back Ooh, yeah it's really good yeah yeah really you, good no it is absolutely i mean if you look at my shelf behind me it's like 80 percent spring bank uh so i've got oh, is it? i yeah spring bank is my my uh where, where my heart lies i absolutely love spring bank whiskey oh, yep he'll be very pleased to hear it are you a member of their club yeah unfortunately they don't accept american uh members to their club so i i couldn't sign up yeah, they. Yeah, unfortunately, and now it's closed off to everybody because of the spike in popularity with Springbank. What? Yeah, yeah, you I can join. I was gonna join. Yeah, you can't I join know. right now. You can join a wait list, but it might take years before you actually get entered into it. So sad. Yeah, it's very um, sad. So I have to go to auction yeah. for a lot of my Springbank whiskey, unfortunately. Wow. <laughs> okay, well, this is bad news. This is very depressing. Yeah. But um, Springbank, yeah, that's my current favorite. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. And I'm, uh, it, I'd am i be surprised if it ever shifts from Springbank because their classic, rugged, industrial style of whiskey is just hard to beat. It's so complex, so unique. Yeah. It's, a, it's yeah. a wonderful stuff. But in the United States, it's nearly impossible to get, and it's very expensive. Really? Yeah, very, it's very. It's not that common here, you know. It's not that common in the UK. Yeah, oh, about two years ago, there was the Springbank boom where, for some reason, well, because it's such great whiskey, everybody and, and their mothers decided to go get Springbank. So it sells out almost the second it goes on sale. And it's frequently, you have to enter a ballot to get some of their more interesting whiskeys. So it's very, very difficult to get everywhere. Wow. Yep, yep. I had no idea. Okay. Yeah, right. so... Yeah. Unless you're traveling out to Campbelltown, it's going to be tough to pick up some new bottles of Springbank. Which is the area that the McTavish clan is from. Oh, is it? Oh, that's... Yeah, yeah. It's, that, it, it's essentially my local distillery. Oh, that's... Well, that's even more reason to, to love it. I mean, that's yeah, really, really cool. Yeah, maybe, maybe Maybe that would stand in my favor. I, I, say, I think so. And I... And... I practically you know, grew up around here. Yeah. You know. Basically your ancestry is all over the place. Um, you know, right. and, and Campbelltown as a region is going to be the next Mecca for 
whiskey tourism. They're opening up three new distilleries in the region and a new golf course. I mean, it's just going to explode with tourism over the next few years. I mean, it's really going to be popular. It, it, and it's a beautiful, not often visited part of Scotland because it's in that peninsula, the Kintyre yep. Peninsula. Yep. People kind of just don't go there. No. Uh, but it's stunning. I've cycled all the way through it and um, go over to the Isle of Gia mm -hmm. as well from there, which is a beautiful, beautiful jewel of an island. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, no, no. And uh, yeah, I was I went there last year uh, with some family and friends, and uh, it's an incredible peninsula. But uh, it's it, not many people travel there right now, but it's it's, it's spiking. It's going to be a place where every, yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be the new Isla of Scotland. That's how how big it's going to be. So, you know, travel there now while it's still kind of quiet because it's not going to be quiet for long. <laughs> I'll book the flight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Um, yeah. All right. I'm going to get you out of here on this last question. If you're going to share a dram of whiskey, with four famous people, dead or alive, who are you choosing to sit with and enjoy this whiskey? With your war chief, who are you going to join it with? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> well, um, definitely Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I, would, I would have Shakespeare because I'm sure he enjoyed it. Yeah, pretty, absolutely. Um, who else? Uh, I think hmm, Winston Churchill. All right, yeah. Big whiskey drinker. Absolutely. Big big whiskey drinker and he would be so entertaining mm -hmm. um now do you do you smoke that. cigars with your whiskey like churchill would or no no i don't yeah no, it's not a requirement no. not a requirement <laughs> um who else uh let me think my dad of course yeah. yes my absolutely i would i would have my dad there um and Oh, let me think. What the, who's that other person that I want around the table? Gosh, there's so many. Um, I think there's a there's a dear friend of mine who's who's um, no longer with us actually, mm -hmm. but he he used to love whiskey, and um, and I we actually toasted him during the first season of Men Kill. Mm -hmm. um, Martin Graham Scott, mm -hmm. yeah. and I think he would make a very, very enjoyable addition to. The oh, business. absolutely! Shakespeare, Churchill, friends and family. I mean, what better table could you have than that? I mean, that sounds wonderful. Um, yeah. But I'm going to let you go back to your your moving out and moving in here. I know you're you got a busy busy <laughs> schedule. Guide the camera away from the box. <laughs> You did a good job. I, I would never have known if you didn't mention it right off the bat. So, uh, But I, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me today. This was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about your bourbon, a lot about your background, and I look forward to trying the War Chief when it comes out, which can be bought online right now in the United States, in all states but five, which I, it says on your website which states are excluded. So it does. everybody check that out and uh, try it out. But again, thank you so much for joining me, and we'll be in touch in the in the future. All right. Thanks so much, mate. Take All right. Care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.